Creative with Co Chanel presents From Garment Designer to Adobe Illustrator. Hello, today I'm going to show you how to take this garment designer pattern and bring it into Illustrator in the easiest way we've found to do it so far. Garment Designer wasn't intended to export vector files, but that certainly doesn't mean we can't take it into Illustrator and vectorize it for whatever purpose. The first thing I'm going to do is make this pattern file a little easier to bring into Illustrator from PDF. And to do that, I'm going to get rid of these extra things that are on display. So first, I'm going to get rid of my dimensions. If I had a grid showing, I'd certainly take that off as well. You can choose to take final pattern off if you like. It'll get rid of these notch marks. But for this, I'm going to leave them on just to show you how to take them off. And so we're going to leave final pattern on for now. I'm going to change this to my actual size. And I'm actually going to also get rid of my sloper. So I'm just going to show my pattern. And then I'm also going to get rid of my seam allowances. Because if you use Illustrator, you know that you can offset your path and then add those seam allowances. It's just gonna make this easier once we get into Illustrator. So now that I have it all set up, let's go to our print preview. And you can see that this is set up for a home printer and it's, it's going to save this file on multiple pages. And when you try to bring a PDF with multiple pages into Illustrator, it'll have you choose one page and then each page will have a clipping mask on it for that. And so just to make it a little easier for us, we're going to change the page setup so that each of these patterns is on its own page. And to do that, we go to our page setup and file menu. And then I have a uh, custom sizes set up already. I just choose a large one that I know is going to fit one of these pattern pieces on it. And you can see that now my pattern pieces, the front is on one page, sleeve is on one page, and the back is on one page. So we go to save it as a PDF. On a Mac, you would just go to print. And then in the print menu, you can go to save as PDF. And so I'm going to save this as test one and send it to my downloads. So let's go to our downloads and there it is. And so I'm going to right click on this and go ahead and open it with Adobe Illustrator. And there is the menu I was telling you about where it'll, if there's multiple pages, it's having you ask for one. So you're going to have to do this for each of these pages. When you're done, you can go ahead and transfer them all onto one file. So I'll start with the front, zoom out a bit. The size of the page that you set up in Garment Designer is going to be the size of your artboard, which is why I like choosing a big one so I have a large artboard to work with. So the first thing we notice when you get into Illustrator is that things are grouped in different places. And there's also going to be a clipping mask on here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all. And then go to object, clipping mask, release. So I'm going to start getting rid of some of these extra bits right here. Just to be picky. Now let me zoom in on here. And you can see that... These curved segments are the ones that would give you a hard time if you're just trying to use this as a, a vector file as is. So even though this these are paths, we're going to change this to make it easier to put into image trace and have image trace do the work for us. So if you like, you can get rid of this extra. I would actually do that right away. And you can also see that these are the notches that you can either leave off by not selecting final pattern. And they're up stacked on top of each other. So I'm just going through and deleting the top most one. And then I'm going to put these on their own layer as well as this dart. We'll save that for later. 
and I'm gonna put them all onto a layer and lock it. Now when I select everything, I am not selecting those little notch points or the dart. What I'm going to do first is go ahead and put black as both the stroke and the fill. I'm also going to change the stroke to two. And now you can see it's a nice hard line. First select everything. And then we're gonna go to object. And we're going to rasterize. After we've rasterized this image, now you can see that we are able to use image trays. Before we couldn't because they were already paths. I'm going to select my image and then I'm going to bring up my image trace window. It's important if you have your advanced options hidden that you click the drop down menu so that you could see the options. And then you're going to want to select strokes, leave no fills. And then I'm going to do overlapping. And then I'm going to change the preset to a line art. And then it's a lot of experimenting to see which one gives you the best result. But I believe this one looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave it at that. It's already been image traced. So now what I want to do is select it again and expand it. And now you can see that it expanded into pass. And you can see that these lines don't have the as much as the small segments as before. And we could clean that up even a little bit more. So we're going to go to object and path. And then we're going to simplify this. And you can see that with the current settings, it's not gonna end up like we like it. So I want to keep a lot of my curve precision and just see how many points. Ooh, not that much. And the angle threshold as well. And it's just a matter of changing these settings till you get it where you like it. I'm mostly watching the corners to make sure that they're not rounded or change any of the lengths too much. And so now that we have that, I can go ahead and press OK. And we can still see that this one's a little bit rounded up here. And you can go ahead and clean these up by deleting a lot of these that you know should be straight segments and taking this curve away right here and right here. And then you can just go ahead and do the same for a lot of these extra points if you want to. For this one, I think that is good enough. For the next step, we're just going to trace any of our darts that we have. I already have this dart on my second layer. My second layer is locked, so I can trace it onto the layer I'm currently on. I'm going to first bring over a guideline, and then I'm locking it by hitting Command-2. Let me zoom in here. And I'm also going to bring a guideline here. Why not? And I'm going to lock that Command-2. I'm going to bring my pen tool out. And actually, I'm not quite sure these are even, so I'm going to go ahead and align these two points. Yep, there we go. Now they're even. And I'm actually going to align these two points as well, just to make sure they're nice and even. Now I'm going to unlock my guidelines, get rid of those. And now you have your vectorized pattern. And so now I'm going to go ahead and add seam allowances to this. But first I want to check if it's a compound path or if it's an open path. You can check two ways. The quick way since you're already going to be doing this is select your object. Oops, I'm going to have to unlock that. Select your object. Go to Object Path Offset Path. And then I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance. And when it does the offset path and it offsets it both ways, it means that your object is actually open. So I'm going to undo that. And I'll show you the other way you can check. You can go to your window and your document info. 
and you can change your document info for objects if it's not already there and you can see that I have one open path. So I'm going to type this. I'm going to take this dart, put it on my other layer so I can do this a little easier. I'm selecting everything and hitting command J. And now let's see. Zero open and one closed. Great. So now we can go ahead and apply our seam allowance by going to object path offset path and I'm going to offset it by 0.5 can have a preview right here. If you wanted this to be cut on fold, I would suggest just go ahead and lining that up to your center front, selecting, oh, these are grouped together, so you can ungroup those. Shift Command G. And now you can actually use your Pathfinder tool if you like and get rid of the seam allowance right there. Alright, so now you have your pattern piece with your seam allowance and you can draw in your notches if you like and we are set to go. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please email us at info at